you know, there's, there's 600 million people, 300 million people using it now. So what's happening is the volatility dampens. So, you know, the, I think the new down 85% is the new down 50. I actually don't change my portfolio often at all. So the only allocations okay. I did is I started in 2020 all in on Bitcoin. Then I started shifting towards Ethereum. Then I bought a basket, which included a bunch of metaverse plays, some social tokens, some um, layer ones, other stuff. And I basically kept that. So I don't think I've traded anything apart from buying some NFTs. Um, and then, yeah, I the only other major switch was I got I sold most of my Bitcoin for Ethereum um, about six, nine months ago. Yeah. So okay. I'm, so I'm we're going to probably, gonna... I'm probably still 85% ETH and then 15% other stuff. I think two things happened. First, firstly, price got ahead of network activity. So what happened was people weren't, there weren't, there wasn't a lot of new transactions in the network. I, the value transacted wasn't going up and the number of new wallets or active wallets wasn't going up. So price went up and it, the network didn't, and it didn't stick. And the issue was inflation. So why does inflation matter? Well, because the crypto is still a retail network, right? It's really driven by retail. And if you've raised prices on people and wages don't go up as much, they've got less discretionary income. That discretionary income was the dollar cost averaging that went into crypto. And so people stopped because they had to pay their grocery bills or their rent. So that's why it just stopped. So it shows how macroeconomics influences crypto markets in ways that people don't quite yet understand. But that was the big that was the big thing that happened end of last year. So we've seen rotations within the market. So we saw people switching from ETH to layer ones and we saw NFTs hold their value. You know, stuff as people are reallocating what they've got in the market, generally reallocating ETH. Um, you know, a lot of Bitcoin people you know tend to stick with Bitcoin. Um, but a lot of the ETH people reallocated to different parts of ETH, like, you know, NFTs particularly got a lot of attention. The balance of probabilities is that we made the low last year, we retested the low this year, and I think the low is in. But who the hell really knows, right? So, you know, I got the back end of last year wrong, like everybody else. I thought, you know, we were going to get this run and, and we didn't see it. I think we've thrown a war, eight and a half percent inflation, the Fed raising interest rates, all at crypto. Um, we've thrown Chinese um, ban, we've thrown so much at it and it didn't make a new low. Kind of usually that's a signal that the market kind of has found its, its bottom. And so now we're looking for, okay, what are the upside catalysts? The upside catalyst would be if economic growth starts slowing, um, we're likely to see then long duration assets, things that um, tend to outperform in low growth environments. And so that's what we're looking for um, as the spark, I think, is a, is a change in structure so people fear inflation less and start fearing growth more. I think it's over because the market is much larger than it was and Bitcoin is not as dominant. So at the margin, the four-year cycle will have an impact, but not as large an impact. You know, for example, the ETH 2.0 thing is going to create a potential dynamic that's different. So um, I think I think the cycles have changed. And I think, you know, over time, these very volatile trends get less volatile. And we saw that with Amazon in its early days. It was like up and down 95%, then 65%. And then it just gets less and less and less because more people are in the network. So it's the same with crypto now. You know, there's there's 600 million people, 300 million people using it now. So what's happening is the volatility dampens. So, you know, the, I think the new down 85% is the new down 50, is the down okay. 50 where we are now. So it's kind of like we've had a bear market. We've been in a bear market for a year. You know, could it go down 65%? Possibly. But, you know, it's unlikely to go down 85%. People have a very recency bias and they only under, they only know what they know. And people who've been in the Bitcoin market have only been around, you know, a network adoption model for a decade. So they've only seen a few cycles. But if you go to Facebook, Amazon, 
Google, they've all had these for decades and you can see how they work and they tend to lower volatility over time. Um, using Bitcoin as a payment rail, now whether it's for, you know, I don't think it massively helps the Bitcoin network because the use of slots on the blockchain is relatively limited in how um, Lightning works, but it allows it to use um, to create faster payment rails for certain things. Because look, let's face it, most people, the purpose of Bitcoin is not to buy your goods, or certainly not now, maybe in 20 or 30 years time. The purpose of Bitcoin right now is to hold it um, and, you know, as a store of value. And the last thing you want to do is, is buy something um, you know, some everyday grocery on it because it, it doesn't make sense because the expected future return is so high. So, um, but using blockchain rails and, and Bitcoin rails to power a payment system, I think is great. And it's a fantastic development. And the work that uh, Jack is doing and all of this is, is fantastic news. But I don't think it's, it's it, it only at the margin drives active addresses or value exchange, which are the two things that drive the value of, of Bitcoin itself. Well, the entire Web3 world currently transacts on um, Ethereum. Everything's priced in Ethereum. Everything in the metaverse is priced in Ethereum. Does that mean that that stays that way? Who the hell knows? You know, I'm no Ethereum maximalist. I don't know, but right now that's where it is. You know, every NFT is basically priced in Ethereum. Some are now being priced in Solana. So we don't really know I don't think the dollar goes away for a long, long time. Um, you know, the, the dollar is so deeply entrenched. It is the largest network of anything on earth, pretty much. And that's hard to get rid of. But at the margin, does crypto take over more of the payment system in this digital world, for sure. And different things. I think, you know, I think one of the best examples of the use of Bitcoin, for example, has been what uh, Terra has done using it as collateral. I always said it's fantastic collateral. It's actually not great for payments. Uh, yes, um, you know, Lightning Network can solve different things of that, but really as collateral, it's fantastic. And that's what Terra have done. It's a great idea. And that we, we will see more of that. This is only the start of, I think, people using Bitcoin as the collateral layer. It's just different things. I, I just don't know. I mean, we don't care. If I'm sending you a pound or a dollar, we don't care what network it goes on. Whether it goes on some Ethereum layer two or a Bitcoin layer two, we don't really care. So I think we will be sending money, whatever money, over all sorts of different networks. And the more interoperable this world gets, the more we don't care. You just want your money sent to you immediately. Um, so we're not, you know, Stripe is not really about sending Bitcoin around. It's about sending dollars using blockchain rails. So it's much quicker dollars or euros or pounds. Same as Bottle Pay do as well. Um, that's now owned by um, um, Nidig. So I think that's good. And I don't think there's, it's not a competition amongst blockchains. I think different people can offer different solutions. It's essentially creating a, you know, like a stable coin element of being able to move money around fast. And that's great. Ethereum is just not the store of value. Now, Ethereum maxis will say, well, you know, we're, it's going to be this ultra hard currency. I don't really care. Bitcoin yes, is a better problem. solution for that because of its um, further decentralization uh, and security of the network. So it does a perfect job. Ethereum is not trying to be that. Ethereum is trying to be the open internet, you know, the the Web3, the, the, the new layer. So again, I think they interact together. And I think Bitcoin is this collateral base layer. Right now, it's not being used as collateral, and ETH is being, or is being used as collateral, but ETH has been used as a lot of collateral for all of DeFi, um, and ETH staking does that. Um, but that's what, and Solana is just a faster, cheaper version of Ethereum, and it's less, uh, it's less decentralized. So that's a trade-off, and that's okay too. And I don't go, oh my God, Solana, why should that exist? It's ridiculous. It exists because people want cheaper and faster, and and they, they they don't care about the maximum decentralization. Bitcoin people care about the maximum decentralization. Monero people care about about the um, privacy. They're all different use cases. They're all just different technologies for different things. And, and that's okay. I just don't see why there's an argument over, well, why can't... Bit, well, Ethereum's not Bitcoin. No, it was never supposed to be.